So a lot of people are talking about this exchange between Frank Warren and Adam Catchrell, where Frank Warren was having a go at Adam Catchrell for criticizing Tyson Fury in the past, especially Fury's avoidance of Alexander Usyk for a couple of years. Frank Warren's got a bee in his bonnet about this. He's trying to attack Adam Catchrell and anybody else who ever said that Fury was ducking Usyk. He's making out as though the fact that Fury has now taken the fight proves that he wasn't ducking him all along. That is just complete nonsense. There is such a thing, and Frank Warren knows this, there is such a thing as ducking someone for a certain period of time and then fighting them down the line. Perhaps you've seen some sign of weakness. Perhaps they're getting old and more vulnerable. Or perhaps somebody has cut you a check that's just too big to refuse. Maybe a bit of all of those things. I always cite the example of Canelo Alvarez ducking Gennady Golovkin for several years, which is absolutely undeniable, but he eventually fought him when he felt as though the time was right. And you often hear this in boxing, timing is everything, taking the right fights at the right time. Canelo and his people were waiting for the right time to fight Golovkin. Frank Warren claims that Fury signed for the fight last year, but Usyk pulled out. How could he possibly pull out when he just fought Anthony Joshua and he announced publicly that he was injured and wouldn't be fighting for the rest of the year. What was it, 10 days after the Joshua rematch? And then he said he'd fight Fury in the early part of 2023. Furthermore, Frank Warren is being contradictory with regards to that supposed December date in 2022. Because previously when Frank Warren was asked why the fight didn't happen in December 2022, he said that the Saudis pushed the date back because they didn't have a stadium ready. But now he's saying it's because Usyk pulled out. Well, which one is it, Frank? We we heard very soon after the Usyk Joshua rematch, the deadline of March 4th. We heard that from Usyk's team and that Usyk would be ready for any date. I think it was late January through to early March. And we know what happened with those negotiations. Tyson Fury messed about, moved the goalposts a load of times and priced himself out. And Frank Warren is now trying to rewrite history and act like none of that happened. What a joker. Frank Warren was trying to ridicule Adam Catrell for suggesting that Fury in the past didn't want the fight or wasn't interested in the fight. Yeah, Adam Catrell pointed out the fact that Tyson Fury on Sky just a few months ago said he had no interest in fighting Alexander Usyk. I'm sure all you guys remember it. And so Adam Catrell's point was, how can you blame me for thinking Fury didn't want the fight when he out of his own mouth said he had no interest in it? And Frank Warren's response was, oh yeah, right. As if Adam Catrell was lying. The audacity of Frank Warren is incredible. He knew full well that Tyson Fury was saying stuff like that publicly. Frank Warren knows full well that Tyson Fury is a pathological liar. And the one thing that Adam Catrell didn't bring up, and I wish he would, is the fact that Tyson Fury could have fought Alexander Usyk in early 2022. Everybody seems to forget this now. I'm one of the few people that still points it out. Usyk's people reached out to Fury's people after the first Joshua fight. They were negotiating, and then Tyson Fury in the middle of negotiating said, I need a tune up. And this is when AJ had already accepted a step aside deal in principle. Fury comes out and said, no, 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 I need a tune up before I fight Usyk. Now, Fury knew that Usyk was on the clock, that AJ wouldn't wait around forever for his rematch. So why on earth, knowing that, would you request the tune up fight in the middle of negotiations? Because that's obviously just going to prolong things. Anthony Joshua got fed up and he said, if you want me to wait longer, you're gonna have to pay me more, which is a perfectly reasonable request. He didn't trust Tyson and Fury's intentions, and no one in their right mind should. Why did he, Frank Warren, demand a tune-up fight when he was negotiating with Usyk after Usyk Joshua won? Could have had the undisputed fight then. Fury had just fought Deontay Wilder a few months earlier. Why on earth would he need a tune-up? He knew Usyk was on the clock, and if he was gonna fight Fury, he had to get a deal done quick because AJ wanted his rematch. So the next time Adam Catrell or anybody with a set of cojones talks to Frank Warren and wants to pull him up about the stuff his man Tyson Fury has said in the past and done in the past, talk about the fact that he could have fought Usyk in early 2022. So all this stuff that Frank Warren's saying about it's the fastest undisputed unification or one of the fastest of all time, absolute load of rubbish. It's actually one of the slowest undisputed unifications of all time. One of the most protracted and drawn out because of Tyson Fury. And of course, Fury's at a press conference saying, see, all this talk about 
I'm running from Usyk, what a load of rubbish. Here we are, look, here, here I am. Well, what about all the talk from you, Mr. Fury, that Usyk didn't want to fight you? If you're going to use that logic against Usyk, we can use that logic against you. A taste of your own medicine. You were saying that Usyk didn't want to fight you, but yet here we are. <laughs> Now, there were some people who said that Fury would never fight Usyk. I was not one of them. I have never in any of my videos said that Tyson Fury will never fight Alexander Usyk. I've been very consistent in saying all along that Fury probably will fight him if and when he sees a sign of weakness and or the Saudis cut him a big enough check. As far as I'm concerned, it's no coincidence that they started negotiating for the fight, Fury did seriously for once, immediately after Usyk's performance against Daniel Dubois. That's what Tyson Fury wanted to see. And that's why he decided to actually push the button and take the fight, combined with obviously the massive check that the Saudis are cutting him. Tyson Fury in many ways behaves like a despotic dictator. It doesn't matter how many times he lies, avoids fights, misleads the public, contradicts himself. As far as he's concerned, you're not allowed to call him out or criticize him for any of it. The only thing you're allowed to do when talking about him is praise him. That's the way Tyson Fury behaves. That's the way his dad John behaves. And that's the way Frank Warren is behaving now. Doesn't matter what indiscretions Fury commits, you're not allowed to point them out. That's how Frank Warren's carrying on. Fury wants a cult of sycophants around him. Yes, men. And Frank Warren is happy to oblige. And it'd be one thing if Tyson Fury wasn't absolutely full of it. If he was a truthful person and an honest person rather than being a deceitful one, then there wouldn't be much to criticize. But it's because he's so deceitful and so deliberately misleading that people like myself, Carl Frotch, Adam Cattrall, True Geordie, etc., etc., feel the need to set things straight. Fury has become a bad influence on boxing, particularly in the UK. Not so much over the fans at this point, although there was a time when he still had a lot of support and the public were falling for a lot of his nonsense. Now, most of the public, particularly in Britain, see through him, but it's the box an establishment itself that still harbors an enormous amount of Tyson Fury sycophancy. And I'm talking about journalists, trainers, some fighters, managers, promoters, pundits, etc. There's still a disconcertingly large number of them who are Tyson Fury sycophants and cheerleaders. And for people like that to be cheerleaders for a guy who's so deceitful and dishonest is obviously problematic. Anyway, let me know what you guys think.